Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So I'm going to show you today um, a few of our favorite homeschool games, or just favorite family games in general, but uh, most of these are educational, so I do consider them part of our homeschooling. Um, so sometimes we might do these in place of like, you know, a lesson with paper and pencil or or just some extra practice or whatever, something to mix things up and get things fun again. Um, you know, because no matter what you're doing, sometimes there's some drudgery involved, uh, no matter how fun you make it. But games always seem to uh, re-spark an interest. So without further ado, I'm just going to show you what I have here and what um, my kids and I and my husband enjoy playing together. Now some of these might not look overtly educational, um, but I think they still have a lot of value. And one of our favorite games, or one of the kids favorite games for sure is headbands now this is a cute little game where you wear a headband and then you have a card and you don't see what's on your card but you put it right here in the front and then you put it on your head like this and then um you have to try to figure out what your card is or what you are so you ask questions of the people around you um am i alive uh, uh, am i usually inside or outside uh, and the kids really enjoy that. I think it does have a lot of value. Um, it really teaches them um, elimination, you know, uh, through um, asking the right questions. Sorry, my brain's like on the fritz this morning. Uh, but yeah, they really enjoy that game and I really like playing it with them. It's, it's so fun. I would say definitely it's probably for kids older than five usually. My younger daughter had trouble with it for the longest time because she just wanted to guess what she was. So she would say, am I a bear? Am I a chair? Am I a washing machine? You know, oh, just guessing what she is over and over. But they really enjoy that game. Um, some other favorites are, of course, Professor Noggin card games. Um, these are like trivia games. So we have the Birds of North America version. And we also have the Ancient Civilizations card game. I have heard that they're is a women's history, or I've seen that there's a women's history trivia game, but I have not been able to figure out where to purchase it at all. It's not, doesn't seem to be available. And I really want that one. But uh, my kids really enjoy this. My older daughter in particular, who is 10, and sorry for any extra background noise, it's my washing machine. I've got to, uh, got to get things done, you know, even when I'm <laughs> making videos. Um, so these are really fun. So for example, this says Aztecs on the front and that kind of gives you a clue of maybe what your answer is gonna be or what these questions are gonna be about. And then on the back, you have the trivia questions and you can either play um, easy or hard and make the questions harder depending um, on how well you know the answers to these. But the other person will roll the dice and if they get a three and you're playing easy, then you read um, the easy number three question. And then they just answer it. And and then you, the whole point is to go through your cards. Um, and whoever, whatever team or whichever person has the most cards at the end wins. Um, it's a really fun game. I in particularly love the Ancient Civilizations pack um, just because it's so thrilling to watch my older daughter get excited um, and answer questions about ancient civilization. It's so cute. It's adorable. Um, I love seeing kids knowing things about um, the Aztecs and Egyptians and Greek gods and stuff. And we also have the Birds of North America one, which my kids are like experts on at this point. Let's see. Another favorite is this um, United States of America floor puzzle. It's a big 48 piece uh, puzzle that you build on the floor. Um, and this is just a fun extra thing that they do uh, and it's just, I don't know, it's really fun to have giant puzzles that you do on the floor. So I, I recommend at least having one giant floor puzzle in your home, no matter what it is. And that's just a fun little extra we do. We have other puzzles I'm not going to show you because they're just fun little picture puzzles. Um, another game that we have is United States Bingo. Now this one, my kids love. I don't care for quite as much. Um, but I mean, it's still, I mean, it has value to it. I just don't understand um, the concept behind some of it. Um, 
Like, for example, let's see. I'm trying to remember how to play now. So you have these little pieces right here. And then, um, how do you play? I'm like not remembering how to play right now. You have these little pieces. And if you have a piece that matches up with one of your cards, um, you just say, you know, I've got it, Massachusetts. You yell at your state. And so if cattle, if this matched up, if someone said cattle, and then the state right here says Oklahoma, if you said, oh, uh, Massachusetts, uh, I've got cattle on Massachusetts, if there were cattle here, um, the caller or the bingo caller um, at that point would be like, nope, not Massachusetts. And then everyone would study their cards and eventually call it the state. Um, so this is kind of like, helps you with state recognition and also maybe what the state um, is known for producing or what's common there. Uh, my kids love to play this game. Again, it's all right for me, but as long as they like it, that's what matters. Now let's see. Speaking of stakes, uh, we have another state game that probably is pretty familiar to a lot of you. Um, it's the Scrambled States of America game. And this one is really cute, although I will say the hype over this game, I know people love it, but I was surprised about um, how much I didn't. I didn't love it, and my kids didn't really love it either, and I thought it would be a whole lot more fun. But it's just another geography game. But I will say I still really enjoy it because we have made it our own. We don't necessarily play by the rules. Um, it stresses my kids out too much that there's like a race aspect to it to say your state um, as quickly as possible. Um, so we actually kind of play this as a game show. Let's see here. So like, most of the time, we don't play with these little cards. We usually would say, um, is purple, and then everyone would study their cards and see if they have a purple state. Um, and then they would name that state. Oh, I've got this to, to be the first person to call that out. Or, you know, is not showing teeth. So it's like a state recognition game. But I use it kind of like as a game show, and I just use this. And then I do like a trivia um, game show thing where I'll just call out, I might cover this up and say, the nickname is the Aloha State. And my kids study this and then scream out usually, oh, Hawaii, or whatever it is at the time. Or if I wanna make it harder, I don't show, um, I don't show the picture. Usually I would show it like this if I wanted to make it easy. But to make it harder, um, I don't show the shape of the state. And I just say capital Honolulu. Um, except in a really projecting, fun game show voice, which my kids really enjoy. Um, so it's still a fun game. Um, we just don't usually play by the rules, which is fine. My kids, my kids enjoy that. Uh, now I will say, this is a favorite in our house right here, and that is Flower Families. It's a go fish game. So really simple, really simple concept. My seven-year-old loves this above everyone else, but it has really beautifully drawn pictures of flowers on here. And each family, so there's the mint family, each family has four, um, four plants per family. And then so your job is to play it like go fish where you're trying to collect all four of a particular family and then you lay them out. Um, so it's exactly played exactly the same as goldfish except for flower family. So you would ask someone Do you have anything in the buttercup family? Because I have a buttercup family flower and then it also has the name At the bottom and then the scientific name as well and the scientific name for the family. So I really love this um, It's beautiful. They're just fun to handle the really thick really thick good quality cards um, and just really beautiful illustrations of the plants on here. And I just got that because my kids love Go Fish anyways, and without realizing it, you know, they're recognizing um, different plants and becoming familiar, familiar with different plant families, which is really nice. So I consider that part of nature study. Now another favorite homeschool game is this little beauty right here. I don't have the box for it, but it's Mancala. My kids love Mancala, 
And I will say, I do think it has a lot of value um, as far as developing memory, strategy skills, and math counting. Um, this really uh, helps my seven-year-old with her counting. You know, you're counting, you're counting how many beads you have, and then moving them along in the slots. You know, putting one, two, three, four, and trying to see where they're going to end up to. So my kids. <sighs> Sometimes I don't want to play this with them because they've become such good strategists that they will study this board forever before they finally make their move, like counting out their move, seeing what their next move could be and what even their next move could be and trying to make sure that I don't win. It's wonderful. It's a wonderful, juicy brain activity. Let's see. I only have a couple more here. Um, here's another or this is the first one I showed you, I think. Here's a math game that I got for my seven-year-old that I pretty much exclusively play with her, and it's called IC10. And this is a cute little game where you just have these little chips, and you lay them out um, like this, all, all spread out, like all on a table or something. And then you take turns flipping them over. So I would flip over four, and maybe my daughter flip over an eight. And the whole point is to be the first person to call out, I see 10. So you leave them you leave them flipped over, or at least we do. So you continue flipping them over with different numbers until finally you might flip one over and see, um, I'm not coming up with one right now, see a pair that would go together that would make 10. So you flip it over and you be the first person to call, I see 10, and then you get to collect those two chips. And whoever has the most chips at the end wins. And the great thing about this is there's incredible flexibility. Um, so you don't have to play it to just see 10. You could say, um, you know, you could make it to where you have to flip three chips over and then see if you um, can make 10 with three chips or not make 10. Maybe you just flip them over and say, I see 14 um, and see who can add up the two numbers quickly of whatever is getting flipped over. I like it because it's a really flexible little game. And, I mean, my daughter loves this. And it goes by quick. I don't know about you guys, but I like it when games can be played in a relatively short amount of time. Now, the last game that I have, let me get the box again. The last game I have to show you is another math game, and it's called Four-Way Countdown. Right here. And I will say what I love about this game is not only is it a wooden board, but there are no loose pieces. This is it. And so this is another math game where you pop this. Of course, it's not going to pop now. Is it broken? Guys, did you break this? Oh, no. Might be broken. Um, we might just have to... I don't know. I don't know how we're going to do that. Um... You pop this, and whatever number you get, so if it's your turn, you have five and one. And you're allowed to work with five and one three different ways. You can subtract, add, or multiply. And so each person, only four people can play this, up to four people. So if I wanted to say, okay, I'm going to do the equation five minus one, then I would flip up four. But once I have four, four flipped up, no matter what um, dice I roll next time, um, I'm going to need to do a different equation to get a different answer other than 4. So maybe I would get a 5 and a 1 again, and I'll be like, well, all right, I can't do the subtraction equation, so I'm going to do 5 plus 1 for 6, or 5 times 1 for 5. And, of course, whoever has all their little thingies, their little wooden pegs um, flipped up first wins. Um, so my kids really enjoy that game. I like it because they can play that... It's one of those games that it's easier for them to play together, um, you know, just each other. So that's really nice. And again, I love, love, love that there are no loose pieces. The less pieces in a game, the better. Um, but that is all of our favorite homeschool games and activities. I have more games on our shelf, but they don't get played as much, so I didn't want to pull those down. And hopefully, I will, I will always be um, on the lookout for more wonderful engaging games and so if you have any suggestions on educational games that are really fun to play um, either as a family or for your kids to play together I really want those suggestions down below because I am starting my Christmas shopping so I need um, game suggestions particularly um, if they're science related 
I would really love that, but really anything, anything you have at all. But I hope you guys enjoyed watching, and I will see you all again really soon.